I'm bored today. Let's take a look and see what, what my Windows 95 computer is up to. Well, that doesn't look right. And how are we going to do this? Well, with the help of some software called Calmira, in this case, Calmira 2 version 3.3. It's just a third party shell that's available for Windows. There are many of these out there. This one in particular obviously recreates the uh, Windows 95 and 98 aesthetic. So let's go ahead and take a deep dive into what this can do. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and run the installer. Uh, I will link to it below if you uh, want to download it yourself. Uh, in this case, it's C33 setup. It should be the latest version. There are other versions too, but this is what I'm going to go with myself. See this, it looks like a more modern install wizard setup. It's really not much to it, just a few clicks and there's a lot of customization you can do after the fact, of course, but in terms of the actual setup, that's it. And if you want to open up the readme, you can, and it goes over everything and my mouse is not responding very well, but you get the idea. So we'll go ahead and launch it. Even shows the tip of the day, but as you can see, there it is. If you didn't know any better, you would not be able to tell the difference, especially at a quick glance. It looks just like Windows 95, or even a little bit like 98. You do have right-click context. You can change the different colors, system colors. Seems to be grayed out, probably because I haven't set anything up yet. But I mean, as you can see, everything is uh, like it should be. And of course, you can open up the Windows 3.1 desktop control panel so you can set your wallpaper, etc. I don't have anything fancy installed. So we'll just go with that for now. I'll copy over some wallpaper in a little bit so we can make it look better and so that it kind of mirrors the intro. So, but I mean, that's. There, there's not a ton to it, and at the same time, there's a lot of options you can set up, but the defaults are typically enough. And you can see here, it looks just like the Chicago Windows 95, Windows 98, and to an extent, Windows Millennium and NT4 start menus. And you've got the program groups set up as start menu items. And yeah, and you can set up uh, auto start even which uh, would run, I believe, with Kelmira itself, especially if you set Kelmira as your default shell, which you can do if you so choose to. I mean, you have all of these additional options and everything that you can do, and it's just, it's insane. But again, it's designed so you can set it up as close as possible to mimic Windows 95, 98, etc. Of course, Question is, what's the point? Why not just install Windows 95? This particular computer can definitely run it because it came with it and it will handle 98 as well, especially with the processor upgrade that I put in, the 96 megs of RAM that it has, etc. Well, let's look at it from the standpoint of people in the 90s. Windows 95 just came out. They may have older machines like a 386 that barely supports it. It'll run sluggish. They don't want to spend the money to upgrade their current computer to be able to run 95. Maybe they may maybe they don't have the money to do it. So but they you know don't they don't want to be left out of the you know modern convenience of the start menu, Windows Explorer, etc. You also have the issue with compatibility. Even though Windows 95 is very, very, very compatible with previous uh, versions of Windows, it's not 100 percent And you may have the, some custom written software, you know, think of uh, manufacturing. You've got uh computer controlled CNC machine or you know some other type of machine that's manu using manufacturing, it will only work with the Windows 3.1. It won't work in 95 for whatever reason. You don't want to pay to have it converted. Maybe the company went defunct, but you're you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars for this equipment. So you know you're kind of stuck using Windows 3.1, but you still want some modern conveniences. Or maybe you just don't want to buy a new computer. You like what you have, you're happy with it. So that's kind of what the point was, you know, and because that shutdown bitmap during shutdown, that's kind of neat. Um, yeah, so 
nothing super groundbreaking or exciting or anything like that. You know, I mean, if you want to stop watching the video now, I appreciate watching this much. But if you want to see some more of these options and everything, stick around and we'll play with some of the settings. One of the settings that I'm going to disable is the splash screen during loading because we don't want it to come up every time. Let's see what else do we want to do. And we'll MS-DOS command prompt scripts. Sure, why not? Scripts we run on their windows. We don't want the tip of the day. Everything else should be fine. Got internet settings here. So you can set your default browser and all of that. It's event sounds, which we're not going to worry about. You can do users, which Windows 3.1 by default doesn't do anything like that. There's add-ons and stuff like that. But by default, you don't have that one. Now you can do that. And of course, again, we've got advanced. So, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to shut the computer down for now so I can drag some wallpaper and stuff like that, and we'll continue. Okay, we're back, and I have the cloud's wallpaper set up. I also went ahead and configured the startup and exit sounds to mimic Windows 95. And of course, exit. So there's that. And of course, your number one question probably is, okay, how do we get this to be the default shell? Uh, there is no specific setting within Calmira you can set. At least I haven't found it, but it's been a while since I've also used it, so it's hard to say. However, I do remember that you can go to the Windows directory, and there should be, I believe it's win.ini. Different one. I'm trying to remember. Like I said, it's been a while. It might actually be... It might actually be system.ini. Let's find out here. Yeah, okay, yeah. So there it is under boot, shell equals progman.exe. Progman is short for program manager. You would need to change that to the path of Calmira, which would be Calmira and then Calmira.exe. I believe though, if this is again something that it's been a while since I've done this, but I believe if I put a semicolon here, it will ignore that line and then I can do this instead. And we will save it and let's find out. And there we go. And as you heard, the default Windows 95 startup sound came up with it as well. And now, unless you actually click start to read that, or looked very, very closely, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. I mean, that's how good this is. Now, right-clicking, it still gives you the uh, Windows 3.1 style GUI elements. But there is Task Manager. It's similar to the one in 95 and 98. And you do still have, I believe, the classic 3.1 task list. There was an option. Actually, there's a couple of options. If you right-click the Start Menu, you can go to Start Menu Properties. And this is where you can customize your program groups and everything. You also have preferences. You can do normal Windows 3.1 menu, which gives it this kind of an ugly setting. We're going to change that back. Let's do a full rebuild just to be safe. There. Use large icons for first level of menu. So that's what this is here. Highlight items with selected color bar, draw selected items using bold font, leaving that off. Run setup menu items only when Kelmir is a shell, which is what we just did here. Pop up start menu after left button is released. So basically just click and let go. Uh, line installation programs to modify the start menu. Sure, why not? And I already turned this on here, but there is support for the start button on the Windows keyboard. Unfortunately, it brings up the start menu. It does not close it back down. So, but that's kind of neat too, that that's an option there. So, so the uh, pattern lines you see on screen, those are 
Moyer lines. I think that's how it's pronounced. I can never really pronounce it correctly. It's not on the screen itself. It's just artifacting caused by the camera lens and the LCD display itself. But one of the other main features of Calmira is, well, effectively a explorer uh, style menu. Not quite accurate because you don't have the file, et cetera, et cetera. So if you open up Kelmir Explorer, okay, so they are keeping these as separate elements instead of combining them. That's fine too. So instead of using, you know, Win file, you can use effectively Windows Explorer, which again is kind of really neat. So, I mean, neat if you're a nerd like me, so of course. But as you can see, we don't have, you know, full file name support or more than 8.3 characters, I should say. But again, that has to be implemented. But I mean, you've got basically everything here. It's going to be very similar to, you know, the Windows on a 5 Windows Explorer. The other thing you may notice if you go to settings is recycle bin. They do have an implementation of the recycle bin as well. So you can delete items. You know, set different options, you know, empty the bin when you're shutting down, do not remove anything automatically, keep at most eight megs of trash, etc. Other options we have here are for the desktop, which you kind of saw earlier. And again, you can adjust different settings and everything. Oops. Mouse is very sensitive. I'm going to have to adjust those settings later. And again, as you saw with the right click menu, you got your start menu options and your taskbar options. Control panel otherwise. These are all your different control panel options, which are the, going to be the exact same ones that you would find here. So, but even right clicking the menu here, you do still have run. So program manager, you go to file, you can run a program, find files, stuff like that. So some of those features are still there available to you so that you don't have to search around, especially if you're still kind of new to everything, but you do have the find here, which Again, it's going to be mimicked after Windows 95 is fine. I don't know if Calmira builds like a database of everything on the hard drive so that searches are much more quick. I'm sure the documentation might say it's somewhere. But yeah, kind of a different type of video. It's not that I'm necessarily promoting this software. I just remember running this software, you know, many, many, many years ago just to kind of poke around with it and have some fun and it's definitely gotten better over the years. I haven't used it since I think version two point something maybe. I, as the name may suggest, will give you a Windows XP style start menu and some of the user interfaces and everything like that. So, so what you guys think of this? I uh, hope it was kind of entertaining, if not a little informative. If you want to mess around with this, like I said, I'll put the links below in the description of where you can find Kilomir. Again, not sponsored, not affiliated with them or anything like that. I just thought it was kind of neat software back in the day. And for those that are into retro computing, it may still be neat software for you now. So if you guys think, leave some comments below. Do you have any experience with Calmira? Do you have any other shells that would you know improve the Windows 3.1 interface? There are other options out there too. Leave some suggestions down below. You won't be able to leave uh, URLs, I believe, because of spam and things like that. So you might have to be a little creative with how you explain how to find these things. But if you got any ideas or anything like that, Leave them down in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks all. I will catch you later.